Morning on NTV, we are live from Kampala Serena Conference Center. I'm Andrew Chama, get home to our NC. Now, an entrepreneur who once owned a preschool, unfortunately due to the COVID-19 pandemic, high establishment is one of those that have been out of business for as long as the pandemic has lasted. Anit Tresigewe Nakabugo, the founder of Garden Rose Kindergarten, came to Morning at NTV today to share with us quite a little bit of what is happening. Good morning, Anet. Yes, good morning. It's very exciting to see you at, um, at such a juncture when everything doesn't seem to make sense yes. in line of business. Yes. Please. How are you holding up? Yeah, we are trying. I'm trying, you know. Mm. We are trying our level best to see that actually we, pre we, we are prepared. Mm. Yes, we are trying. So what have you been up to since you're not in business anymore? Have you changed? You've seen teachers here who have actually gone to, you know, bricklaying, um, selling water, doing laundry and all that. How are you holding up? What business have you channeled your strength to? Yes, I myself, I think I've not channeled. Mm. I've not channeled. What I've done, mm. I've tried to improve. Okay. Yeah, I'm improving myself. I'm reading. I'm trying to add on, you know, mm. because you see education, it's a, it's a process. Eh? Mm. I'm trying to read, to add on, to research, to prepare the schools, you know. To so you're investing that as and when it's opened, you... Yes, when you it's open, then you start straight away. Mm. Mm. When all this started to hit you as a young business that was just starting and getting to its feet, how bad was the experience? Oh, my God. Yeah, it was really bad. But you see, in the first place, we thought that it was going to be a short period of time. Oh, yes, like six you months. Know? Oh. Yeah, six months, <coughs> like a month or mm. two. We thought that it was going to be short. So I said, maybe we are going to prepare and then come back mm -hmm. full swing. Mm. But afterwards, we could see three it's months, going on, three six months, months, six one months, year. eight months, one year, and then... We had to wait, mm. you know? Yes, it was really not good. With the nursery schools closed, what is the future of the children? The ones um, you would be teaching or the ones in kindergartens would be teaching uh, or a parent like me had. What do you yes. think is the future like? The future of nursery schools? Mm. Uh, I think according to what our minister communicated, mm. um, I think I have hope they will open the nursery schools. Okay. Mm, I have hope they will open mm. because I don't think they can really close the ECD centers mm. because they are very important. Very. Yeah, the kids need the foundation. Mm. We need the foundation <coughs> of our education. Without uh, that foundation, mm. I don't think education would be... That profound. Yes. All right, yes. Uh, let's look at the children. What are some of the dangers um, are you expecting to see when these kids get back to school? Is it psychosocial in a way? Um, is it very... Uh, do you feel you're going to find their mental state in the in the right shape they had before uh, pandemic came through? Uh, I think a lot of changes will happen, uh, like th the learning process. Mm. It will really be slowed. Eh? Mm -hmm. The learning process was inter intervi was interfered with. We shall have to come up mm -hmm. and then <coughs> make them come to the level. And then I think they have lost. They, they, they will have. Lo they would have lost the touch of the teacher, mm. the teacher, that, uh, that interpersonal learner relations. teacher relationship. Mm. Eh? Mm. So I think we shall have a lot of, of work to do. But are the teachers equipping themselves with all these skills in one or the other? Yeah. You, you're doing, but the ones you see around you and you know they're teachers, are they doing that due diligence of, you know? Yeah, no, yes, according to, to me, my teachers, mm. for them, they are doing it. Uh, they are doing the, they're progressing in their, uh, in their, Practice. Have you put it mandatory to them that they should be doing this? Yeah, I keep calling them, I <laughs> keep uh, uh, advising them, I send them <coughs> uh, notes, let's mm. say, so that they can really be updated. Do with because the change times. Because at when a teacher sits like for a year, mm. actually coming back, he has, he has to be, at least he has to be on what? On the level. Mm. He's supposed to so be it will take equally the teacher's time to bounce back. Yes, to bounce okay. back. Let's talk about uh, the, the, um, the educational calendar. There is one they send me where my son will be in school for, um, for like one term. Then they, they rest for like one week and they go back. Yes. And it was very disturbing. I had to discuss it with my wife. I said, this is outrageous. What do you make of the calendar? Uh, now, 
Uh, the calendar, I think uh, the, the, the ministry is trying to do its level best, mm. you see, so that we can really fit in. Yes, the calendar is short, especially the period of learning is short, mm -hmm. but school should try at least to find a way of putting the syllabus eh, to mm. fit in. Oh. Yes, to fit in, to see that they can do all what is necessary. Let's talk about the parents. Yes. What yes. kind of um, tips can you give as a parent? to the parents who have had their children for over a year without going back to school, leave alone those who could afford tutors, private tutors who could come home and teach the children. But these ones who are entirely at home and they're curtailed by a lot of psychological challenges in their communities. Mm -hmm. But again, they have to bounce back in school and interact with the others. Yeah. I would advise the parents, first of all, to be patient. Because what I've seen, the, the, the parents are not patient. Mm. All the time they're saying the children are growing. The mm. the, the, what are we going to do? Let's say a kid is three years. The parent wants the, to put her in primary. Mm. So I advise them to be patient. Oh yeah, That's the first advice. Then at least to engage them at home. Okay. You see, learning is not only taking place in a classroom setup. Learning can take place in any Anywhere. place. Mm. So I encourage the parents to provide at least positive learning environment for mm. their children, to engage them <coughs> at home, to find activities, mm. to be there for them, to counsel them, to explain to them what's going on. Now they should explain. That, that yes. is quite a very good thing. I, I love it when you bring in the parents for inclusion purposes. Yes, yes. But again, for the parents, can we emphasize men be a part of this conversation? Be a part of the learning process of your children because at the end of the day, it falls back to you if these children are not in sync with what your dreams are. Um, Annette, yes. let, let, let's look at wh what kind of help would come from the government that could help you. What should the government do to people with businesses like you, kindergartens, early preparatory schools for children that have been in the shambles for the one last year? Yeah, I think uh, right now, uh, as the nursery schools are closed, I think the first thing the government should bring it out when are they going to open That's when the are thing. they opening yes mm -hmm. when are they opening and it, it should involve the proprietors or the head teachers mm. to 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 see way forward if you are going to open mm -hmm. how are we going to do it is it in phases yes. or is it at once yes because it's really important they should open mm. then another thing uh, let's say before opening i think they should offer some financial support Mm. Uh, because you see, when we are opening, they require us to have the SOPs. Mm -hmm. At least they should render a hand. Mm. There are some schools that uh, really w were hardly hit. Yes. Mm. They cannot manage, let's say, the washing facilities, mm. the ex extra furniture. Mm. The government should come in and help a bit. Wow. Yes, yes. Going forward as you wait for the business to open up as and when government deems it right. Mm. And then I want to tap into your, your, your expectations. What do you expect? How excited are you when this is going to run? How have you prepped yourself, mind, body and soul for this day to come? Yeah. Of course, I'm expecting mm, the children coming back. Mm -hmm. uh, coming back in their classes. The teachers coming back. I expect uh, learning taking place. Mm -hmm. Hard work because really it has been uh, a long time. It has not been mm, easy. Mm, we have to, hard w to, to work hard mm -hmm. and we have to at least uh, connect with the parents. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. Well, uh, your last word to the, to the parents. I want you to look right in that camera and you give your last word to the parents and to the teachers, fellow teachers. Yes. Mm. Uh, first, the parents, mm -hmm. uh, you, you should be patient and wait for, at least when the schools are open, I mean the nursery schools, when the schools are open, you should be patient, you bring the kids at school, you work together with the, the school administrators, mm -hmm. with the school to see that you really our kids are, are not lost. Let me say what they learned, we shall add on that and then they, they move on. And then you should trust the schools that they'll do a good job. Mm. And when the schools are open, we should work in hand, hand in hand, like uh, advising the children, counseling them, let's say from home, you also counsel, you do your part, mm. and the school does its part. Uh, let's say 
hygiene practices. Mm. You help the school, the school at least to monitor the health of the kids mm -hmm. so that we work together. That it's in tandem. Yes. That is uh, Miss Aneta Twesigawe Nakabago, the founder of a Garden Rose Kindergarten, a business venture in education that was badly hit by COVID-19. One thing that is very clear, she still holds the ground and she still sees the light at the end of the tunnel. Are you seeing the light at the end of the tunnel? It's that kind of narrative we need to amplify as a country, but government needs to come in and give stimulus to these kind of businesses because the leakages of employment, direct and indirect, are enormous. We'll take a break for now. It's Mongadon TV. Good morning.